Well, it is, uh, I guess, high time uh, that we've met once again uh, around the banner of the Healing Path of White Wolf Von Atzikin. It has been a very long time, <clears throat> actually December 10th, 2012 is when we released the last uh, interview that we did with White Wolf on the Healing Path, and so we're going to do some catch up tonight. We're going to cover what's been going on, and along the way, I suspect that we're going to pick up some uh, additional information and some wisdom and some things that you all can learn and glean from and apply to your own lives and your own situations as you go through your own healing paths. So welcome White Wolf Finance again. Thank you, Randy. It is good to be back. It has definitely been a long time, and it has been a uh, an extremely long winter, so I'm uh, definitely uh, very happy that uh, spring has sprung here in Vermont, and um, my, uh, my path has also uh, sprung out of a... Uh, a uh, very rough time, and uh, it's been kind of flowering like the uh, the landscape around me. So uh, hopefully this will be the um, start up again of uh, many shows to come. I know that you've been through um, a dark, difficult period. And, uh, you know, what always amazes me, White Wolf, is when I talk to you, no matter how grim it is, there is that optimism that I always sense inside of you, that spirit that's just not going to be beat down. And um, I think I think one of the things that I'd like to ask you is how you maintain that spark, because I don't think a lot of people realize, some do, uh, exactly what it is that you've gone through in this very difficult period. Uh, that's a that's actually a really good question. Uh, sometimes I have to uh, to ask myself the same question. You know, I'm like the dandelion. You step on, you know, a thousand times, and I just keep growing. Um, it's. Uh, I think it really comes down to my perspective um, that I have gained uh, through my uh, through my earth walk so far and what I've come to realize um, and that perspective comes from an angle that understands that this this is just a small faction uh, of totality and so when I get up in the morning and when I get out of bed and I look at my yard and I look at the mountains and, and I look at the life around me, uh, I look at the house and, and I look at myself in the mirror, I understand that it's just, it's minuscule. I mean, even though it's so powerful and it's, it's so incredible, you know, on so many levels, it still is very minuscule compared to the great expanse of, of existence and my existence personally. Um... And so, with that perspective, I've come to understand that I am so much more uh, than what I see in the mirror and what I'm able to achieve in this uh, earth walk, and that I exist in many, many places, um, you know, simultaneously, and that I've found the path I'm supposed to be walking with this life. Uh, basically, I found my purpose here uh, in this earth walk, and I've embraced it um, with, with a full heart, uh, full spirit, and open arms. Uh, I've, you know, <laughs> I have no illusions that uh, the path is not difficult, um, but I also have no illusions that the path uh, must be kept uh, dark and dreary, um, you know, pity for me, you know, that's not what it's about. This path is about an expansion. Uh, and it's not just an expansion of, of myself, because it's my path and I'm walking, but it's an expansion of all life that I touch. It's an expansion of all life that interacts uh, with me, through me, uh, around me. Because I understand that everything I see, everything I hear, everything I sense in my life is a result of what's going on inside my own mind. If it wasn't going on in my mind, it wouldn't be present in my awareness. I would not be aware of it. Yeah. And so I understand that, you know, for me to be able to change anything, 
I have to keep that positive attitude. I have to keep the level of optimism. No matter how dark and, and dreary things get, no matter how much pain I might be going through, you know, it's it's surface. It really is. You know, even though you're you're maybe laying there suffering, it's still surface because you still have the mind to work with. Uh, well, it it. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, quite catch really, that you're still. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> Volume's down on my end. Um, so, yeah, it, it, you know, I guess my optimism comes from the understanding that, you know, no matter what I go through, it still is very small compared to what I am, what I'm able to achieve. Uh, and it's... It's within the mind that we have to live, to, that we have to work. Uh, and the exterior is, you know, it's, it's going to weather, it's going to take a beating, it's going to age. That's life. That's life here on this physical plane. But the mind can continue to grow and expand. You touched on uh, some things that we've talked about in the past. And I think for a lot of us, there are certain concepts that are very difficult to operate from and uh, what you referred to earlier about the many aspects of yourself uh, what I call multi multi-dimensional for lack of a better term existence it's something that I've been in discussions with lately with people including some people who uh, have been through mind control or traumatic or uh, ritual abuse and it's a concept that I know could take up, you know, several shows, but I want to touch on it just briefly because it's really a concept that I myself am only beginning to operate in. And it is so important to understand that the limited scope of our, our present life consciousness is not the definition of who we are. And, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it is uh, a very vast topic. Um, I actually have uh, a course where I teach. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I teach about this level of uh, um, of understanding and perspective. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think the course is like four or five full days, so it's a lot of information. Um, but yeah, the the dimensional aspect of of life, you know. Um, it, it all stems from simplicity, energy, uh, and the, the everything, the all, the great spirit, the Allah, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has their own names for it. But basically, it is just a totality of all energy. And outside of this energy, uh, you end up getting a uh, the illusionary expansion or breakdown or compartmentalization of this energy in order for this energy to explore itself, to better understand itself. Um, so it's like your body, for instance. Uh, you look at yourself in the mirror and, you know, there you are. But really, what do you know about the inside of yourself unless you start to compartmentalize, unless you start to break it down into... Um, you know, tissue structure into organ structures, into uh, circulation and respiration and nervous system and molecules and on and on and on, all the way down through DNA. Until you start to break that down and focus on the smaller individual aspects and explore them as much as possible, you really don't know what you're looking at in the mirror, you know, physically speaking. Um, you know, and, and this can be seen all the way through uh, all aspects of, uh, of our physical world, um, all the way through the expansion of the, uh, the forests and the uh, water zones and uh, how swamps turn to, uh, uh, to field and then field turns to forest. And, you know, but yet it's all connected. It's all existing on the same elements. It's all existing in the same environmental structures, the same patterns. And yet everything is broken down into facets in order to better experience the, uh, the totality of experience levels that you can gain from certain energy sets. Uh, so when we take this into the great expanse of existence itself, you know, the, the energy that compiles all energy 
that ever was and ever will be explores itself by the illusion of expansion away from itself. And as it expands away from itself, it breaks down into familiar or similar energy pockets. So like energy attracts like. And these pockets end up expanding, illusionary expansion of course, uh, into their own unique sets of patterns. That would be, for instance, um, deciduous forest which, uh, versus uh, coniferous forest which versus uh, desert land or uh, prairie land. Mm -hmm. But this would be in the context of everything. So you're talking every living creature that has an experience in any universal level belongs to one of these energy pockets. And so when we come into one of these energy pockets and we gain a consciousness, this consciousness is limited in its scope. Uh, it's limited in its scope, its ability to focus on, um, uh, on the, the vast expanse of everything because we need to have a limited perspective in order to gain certain level experiences. If we were able to tap into everything, all at the same time, and have the, the grand understanding of all existence, then it would steal our focus away from the minute experiences that we're trying to gain here in this physical consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so these limitations are they're purposeful. Um, they actually help to uh, structure our perspective in order for us to gain a greater level of understanding of this facet of our energy and how this unique facet of energy interacts with the unique facets of energy that we have chosen to interact with in this physical world. But that means that if we come into this consciousness, we can also, from that same energy pocket, expand into other consciousness levels in other areas of existence. This is where simultaneous existence is coming to play. Um, or, or what did you call it? Multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional. Yeah, multi uh, right, multi-dimensional yeah. existences. So, with that being said, if you look at uh, the trunk of a tree, the trunk of a tree rises up and it's a singular energy source. And it's coming up and then what does it do? It branches, it crowns. And every one of those branches is experiencing its own unique energy path, its own earth walk, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different direction, different shadowing, different winds, different lighting, okay? Um, mm -hmm. You know, every branch you look at has a different crook, a different bend. They're all very, very unique. Not a single one is identical to another. So these would be the lifelines that are coming out of the trunk of energy. And yet, all those branches are connected to the same energy source. They are connected to the same whole, the same being, the same entity, the tree. And off the branches you have the leaves or the needles. Again, further compartmentalization of the experience of the tree itself. And so uh, you can look at a tree and all of its many branches as you, in essence. And you can look at all the branches and try to look at it uh, as each one of those is a consciousness that you're living somewhere in countless universes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all those energies that those leaves are, gra are, are grasping from life, what do they do? They go back to the branch and they go back to the trunk. The trunk ends up taking the experiences and expanding into a better understanding of what it is. Anytime a branch or a leaf needs energy for its survival or greater expansion for seeding or flowering, it taps into that energy source of which it has helped enhance. This is why we get into release work, which uh, we did a show on quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're releasing. We're releasing back to that trunk in order to have it refined so that we're not bogged down by it. We can still be that leaf, airy and waving in the experiences of life, but we're still connected to the experiences without 
tagging the baggage. So, you know, this is the way I perceive my existence, and this is one thing that gives me optimism because I know that I am not struggling in every one of my simultaneous existences. I understand that every bit of work that I do here for my self-healing and try, trying to attain balance or bring balance into different facets of my life ends up helping my other simultaneous lives because we're all connected at the same source, the same core. Yeah, and this is, while it's a difficult, actually your metaphor there, the tree is one that I've worked with as well to, to try and understand, but I think you, you summed that up beautifully. Um, so you've gone through a lot of dark experiences. Um, you were very, very seriously ill for a while. You recovered, and then you were, I guess we can say, attacked again. What do you want to say about um, those bouts that you had, uh, about the attacks that brought them about, and how those ultimately became resolved, if anything? This was actually a show I kind of uh, paused uh, when you mentioned it. Um, I wasn't really sure I wanted to, um, you know, to go back and, and rehash this and, and get into the drama of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I understand uh, if you don't do that, too. Well, you know, but I thought about it, and I said, well... I decided to go along with the show and with the topic because, after all, uh, the series that we're doing is called The Healing Path. So this definitely falls into that topic range. Um, but along the healing path, I have also talked a great deal about grounding and protection. And so um, I'm sure there are a number of questions out there revolving around uh, the reality of grounding and protection. If somebody like myself, uh, who works on this stuff on a regular basis, uh, can be accessed uh, so severely uh, and attacked so harshly. And so I figured, well, this might be a good time to help to uh, present some information to clarify that. Uh, and to maybe answer those questions that are out there today. So I guess we need to go back a little bit uh, to last year, um, specifically the month of October, because that's really when I noticed all of the events of the winter stemming from. Uh, this is kind of where they were born. Um, I have a... Uh, uh, an elite group of uh, individuals, uh, basically they're uh, very, they're high level students uh, of mine who have been doing their work for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, uh, it's the, uh, the Medicine Wolf Pack. Um, we get together a couple times a year and uh, I have very high level teachings uh, which I offer them uh, throughout the year. Uh, it's a very, very close-knit um, group of people, very like-minded, um, and, um, you know, the personal goals of everybody are, um, they're very well meshed with the understanding of uh, expansion. Uh, and, you know, pretty much everything that I've been talking about, you know, that we are so much more than, you know, what most people perceive. And we're here for a purpose. And a group is so much more powerful than an individual, so long as the group is uh, aligned and unified. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had our, uh, we had a council last uh, October, and it was shortly after that council that I ended up um, getting a small cold, uh, which I thought was interesting because I hadn't been sick in like three years. Um, and I take very good care of myself. And so, you know, it was, it was just kind of odd, but I said, oh, well, you know, I haven't been sick in three years. Maybe it's just, you know, my body saying, well, we, we need to, you know, work on the, uh, the immunity a little bit. 
but it was soon after this uh, very short cold, it was, it was quite mild, where I ended up um, having this uh, very intense dredging up of uh, old toxins and poisons in my system. Uh, from, well, the very toxic lifestyle that I used to live. Uh, you know, these things build up in your tissues and your bones and your organs, and uh, over time they, you know, when your body feels strong enough, they release so mm -hmm. that they can be mm -hmm. dealt with and shed. Well, um, it also, interestingly enough, and I didn't even, I didn't even see it, my wife pointed it out, but, um, you know, uh, during this time when all these uh, these toxins were being dredged up in my system and, uh, and it was quite rough and I was kind of wondering, well, you know, why now? Why the beginning of, of winter and just after I was sick? You know, it doesn't really seem like my body should be saying, yeah, I feel strong enough to do this now, you know? Um, and my wife pointed out, well, it's been seven years since you were poisoned in 2005. And it's like, oh, okay, that's very interesting. So I understood that there was a level in uh, in my own mental matrix that uh, I, well, there's many levels in my mental matrix that I still have to do serious work on throughout the rest of my life, uh, but there was a, a level that uh, still had issues uh, with the events uh, in my life of 2005, um, things that I was not able to mentally uh, or emotionally process at that time, so it was coming around after seven years. So, you know, so far this, this was all me, okay? It was all my internal issues, all locked within my mental matrix, my evolution, my programming, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. However, this placed me in a very weak state. And November came, and that's when noticeable attacks began. And I was still doing all my work, all my, my self-healing work, uh, grounding, centering, balancing, release work, uh, you know, I mean, the whole work, everything. But um, I became weaker and weaker. And these attacks, at the time, uh, they seemed to be very, very much aligned with um, astral. Um, well, astral accessing, I should say. Uh, so they began noticeably at night. Uh, and then I started to notice them increasing uh, while I was awake. Uh, I could actually feel the, uh, the energies come in. And it was very frustrating because they seemed to be walking right through all of my protection. Mm, they were being penetrated. Absolutely. Like, yeah. there was absolutely... Like, I was ab doing nothing. Yeah. You know. Um, so they were just waltzing right in like the door was wide open. And so this was a bit of a concern and also confusing and intriguing all at the same time because I hadn't changed anything. And so I started to look into this, but it was very difficult because my energy continued to plummet. By the time the end of November came, um, I had finally s seemingly gotten a break the attack started to lessen and I started to even out a little bit. I could tell I was very weak, but I said, okay, well, it seems like whatever the heck that was leveled out, left me alone, and, you know, now I have time to, to recuperate and hopefully recuperate, recuperate enough before, you know, the hardcore winter got here in the mountains of Vermont. And so the beginning of December was actually okay for about two weeks. Um, and the reason I'm glossing over this section is because I, I believe we did talk about this at the end of last year. Yeah, we did some um, on this, yes. Yeah. Um, and then, as December went on, I could definitely tell, I could feel that, you know, I was being monitored uh, very heavily um, by uh, a group that I, at the time, didn't, they didn't seem familiar. I couldn't tag them. It was very, very different from any uh, accessing that I have encountered before. 
And so, in my mind, I began to wonder if uh, if there was indeed a new faction who decided, for some odd reason, you know, to target me for whatever purpose they had in mind. By the time December had ended and January began, um, you know, the winter was definitely here in full. And my system was, you know, it was evening out. I was okay. But the accessing at night picked up again, and it was regular. Um, you know, sleep paralysis, uh, you know, lots and lots of uh, astral, uh, very demonic uh, uh, dream states. Uh, you know, my wife would wake me up almost every single night. Uh, and then, then is when the, the biggest hit came. I had scheduled my uh, winter wilderness survival course. I had people coming in, and it was going to be, I believe, the second weekend of, uh, of January. And I noticed that the beginning of the week, it was actually the weekend prior, uh, I was hit extremely hard. Uh, and I believe it was uh, time of the full moon. Uh, and it hit me three days in a row and three nights in a row. It was non-stop. And then it just stopped immediately. After three days and three nights, all the attacks, day and night, just ceased. And it was interesting because physically I didn't really feel that bad. I was exhausted because I you know, was hardly getting any sleep. But I just continued to plan for the course. So people showed up, I went out the first day, and uh, actually I picked people up from the airport on Friday night, I believe it was, or Thursday night, it was Thursday night, mm -hmm. and, uh, and everybody was ready. Friday morning I woke up sick as a dog, and I couldn't believe it, it just came out of nowhere, and I mean, I, I really felt sick. I said, great, I have all these people here, they've already paid, they've traveled, you know, and uh, so I went out. So we trudged out, you know, in deep snow, and it was like nine degrees and windy, uh, and it was, you know, it was a brutal winter day. I went out there and I taught all day long, uh, and this was an overnight, uh, two nights out there, so, you know, they were building shelters to sleep in, and, and by the end of the day, I was, I could barely stand up. I was that wasted. And I told him, I said, you know, and I just couldn't even keep myself warm. Uh, I mean, I was just freezing. Um, which is, you know, it just doesn't happen. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I no, I, it might happen with some people, but you're very well conditioned to that climate and that particular type of uh, survival. Yeah, you know, I mean, I had the gear. Uh, mm -hmm. I should not have been cold, but I was, I mean, it was an ice cold from the inside. It was I knew that I just. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told I told him, I said, look, I, I cannot safely stay out here tonight, you know, with you guys. I just can't do it. Um, so I prepared them as best I could to to spend the night, and uh, and I, I walked all the way back home in the dark through the snow, and uh, came in the back door, uh, showered up, went to bed. The next morning, I had planned on getting up early and going back out there, and that was that. I woke up the next morning, I couldn't get out of bed. Um, my wife actually had to go out and inform the, uh, the class of what was going on, and, you know, and uh, everybody pulled out of the woods. Some people decided to stay and just kind of, you know, camp for the duration, and others pulled out. Mm -hmm. um, but I was, well, I was sicker than I had been in I don't know how long it had, I mean... It had to have been at least maybe 15 years uh, since I felt like that. Sicker even than your original attack seven years ago? It was totally different, yes. Okay. Um, you know, the, the attack seven years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the, the attack seven years ago was, was actually, you know, it was a poisoning, uh, a physical poisoning, uh, you know, uh, through uh, a knife blade. So. Great. It has a totally different feel than being sick. Um, it's completely different. 
And this time, I felt like I was, you know, just sick. And it just hit me, you know, like a rock. And so I stayed in bed. But I didn't start to get better. And normally when I get sick, I start to get better very quick because, you know, I do everything natural, you know. And, uh, you know, I really, really uh, take care of myself. But this, I continue to get worse and worse. And uh, before long, maybe maybe about three days, maybe about four days, um, I was racked in so much full body nerve pain. Um, uh, you know, it took everything I had just to to lay there and breathe and just, you know, try to stay somewhat in my consciousness. Um, my body would twitch, uh, you know, uncontrollably. The nerves, you know, they were like being crushed. And it would travel all the way through my body. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's like nothing I had ever felt before. I mean, nothing. It was it was incredible. Um, I couldn't sleep. Uh, you know, I was exhausted, but the pain was so intense that I just I couldn't even pass out. Um, so I just laid there shaking, you know, 24 hours, you know, um, for a number of days. Uh, finally, um, through uh, blood test and uh, also talking to. Uh, uh, some uh, some very very uh, powerful uh, healing clairvoyants that uh, I know very well uh, and trust very well. They have a very good track record, uh, but also the confirmation of the tests um, showed that I had been infected with a um, a man-made virus. Uh, it did not fit the protocols or structure of any natural virus that was um, on record or going around. Um, they said it uh, it definitely did not look organic. Uh, they could not put a tag on what it was. Uh, but they said it definitely looked like it was lab created. So... Um, so I started to um, work with people who started to look deeper into this, this virus. Uh, and they said it was uh, attacking my lymph system and my nervous system. Uh, it basically had shut down the lymph system. Uh, and it was, um, it was supposedly eating the nervous system uh, in my body, uh, which is what was causing the, the intense amount of pain. Uh, and so I was, let's see, I began taking a lot of supplements um, when I wasn't uh, too nauseous that had a lot of um, uh, endocrine um, uh, additives uh, to the supplements, so no natural supplements. uh, to support the uh, the endocrine system, and also uh, taking a lot of uh, omega fatty acids, um, and a lot of uh, uh, things to uh, assist the, uh, the nerve nerve lining, yes, uh, and the sheath uh, around the nerves. And the uh, a lot of people doing work on me, twenty four seven. I had people actually rotating shifts with me, uh, so that you know somebody was always working on me. Um, and I was in that state, um, and, and even the, the doctors, uh, they informed my wife uh, on two different occasions that they did not feel that I would survive the night, that I would not wake up the next morning. Uh, I was in that bad a shape. Um, and so that lasted for about three weeks. Um, and I was in the dead of winter. Uh, I had people, you know, some of my local students were coming over here bringing food, supplies, uh, dragging sleds of firewood over to their back porch so my wife could keep the fire going in the house. And um, we had a, an amazing amount of help. Uh, really did. And finally, my system was able to start pulling out of it. And this was at the very, very end of January. Um, And then, and it was interesting because, you know, 
it was very clear at that time with everybody who understands the agencies, who I was involved with, what I was involved with, that these were um, very specific uh, attacks uh, oriented by the agency that I uh, was employed by, uh, which of course is the CIA. Um, and as cliche as it sounds, um, sometimes the facts of life are cliche. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it was at the very end of uh, January, very beginning of February, I was able to actually get up and walk around the house. Uh, for three weeks, I was almost completely bedridden. Uh, when I did get up, uh, I, you know, had to use the assistance of a cane many times. Uh, my wife and son, if I had to get across the room, if I was, you know, passed out in the lawn, the, uh, the lounge chair, I would actually have to get on all fours and crawl across the room because um, I just couldn't stand up. And so, I guess about a week went by in the beginning of February where I said, I think it was the first time in almost a month that I said to myself, yeah, I, I'm positive I can beat this now. Uh, because there for probably three solid weeks, I didn't really know. I mean, I, I couldn't really even focus on that. While I was laying there in the pain and just not being able to do anything, all I could do was go into my mind and do my work, do my mental work. Um, and even that was pretty low key because it was extremely hard to keep that mental focus uh, in that state of nothingness. So I just did the, my very, very base core foundational technique. Um, and the other people um, who were working with me, they were doing all the, the more advanced stuff that took more energy, more focus, because I couldn't. Uh, if it was completely up to me, I wouldn't have survived January. So it was after about a week, the first week in February, that, interestingly enough, uh, there was a, um, a stomach, an intestinal virus, that hit the local area in such force, uh, with such acuteness, that it was... <laughs> very questionable uh, as to the origin. Mm -hmm. Usually when a stomach virus comes into a place, you know, people get it, but entire organizations and schools don't close down in a matter of two days because of it. But that was happening here. Um, you know, the stomach virus would go into a school and two days later the school was shut down because there was that many students and teachers sick with it. The viruses they take, they take more than a day or two to incubate and come around. Yeah. You know, these things take time to develop in the system and take root. So it was all very odd. Nonetheless, because I was so incredibly weak, uh, I ended up contracting this stomach virus. Um, and uh, that was... That was a very miserable weekend uh, because I had just started to, you know, get up and move around, and this thing hit me, and I, uh, I didn't eat for four or five days. Um, I had lost between 12 and 15 pounds, um, and I, I mean, it took the rest of my energy right out. And it was a real danger because I didn't have the energy to expend on fighting this new virus. Um, and so again, I had uh, an amazing amount of help, uh, an amazing amount of uh, people helping me with uh, my, my healing as well as uh, uh, the proper foods and supplements. Um, and again, it's only because I had the amount of help that I did uh, that my system remained strong enough to be able to pull through that. Uh, because the nerve pain and everything else after the first day of the stomach virus came right back. Um, I mean, it, you couldn't even get out of bed. You just laid there, you know, just in pain. So uh, that lasted 
well, that went on for like a week, and then my digestive system wasn't right for at least another two and a half to three weeks after that. And, uh, you know, that rolled us into March. So when March came around, I had enough energy to start looking into the details of what the heck happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because for two months, I didn't have the energy to do anything. I barely had the energy to keep breathing. And so when March came, I started to do some energy tapping. I started to go into my own energy system. I started to look into my nervous system. I looked into my circulatory, my respiratory system. I started to look into the lymph system. Uh, I started to target them with their specific colors. Uh, so the pale yellow for the nervous system. I started to target the lymph system uh, with uh, pale uh, green. I started to uh, look at the, uh, uh, the circulatory system with the pale red. I started to look at the respiratory system with the medium green. Uh, and I started to put each one of these uh, in the world with the pineal gland, and I started to access them like doorways. And I started to move my consciousness into them to start reading the structure of what was going on. Because your body has memory, and therefore your memory shows up in the coding of all your systems at any given time. So long as you know how to look and you can keep your focus. So this is effectively cellular memory that you're tapping into? Yes, yeah, okay. uh -huh, definitely. Okay. Um, and so I started to read the cellular memory uh, of what was going on in my system since October. And I started to see patterns, very subtle at first until I started going deeper. And the patterns that I saw were very interesting. They were coming from two different areas. Each one had a very unique energy signature. In the first pattern, I was very familiar with. It was the pattern that I had identified after I was poisoned in 2005. Uh, and it has uh, been, well, it was a pattern that I was able to identify on a number of accounts since that time. And this pattern aligned directly with the attacks that came from the agency um, upon my life over the years. The other one partially was familiar and partially not. It took a while. I actually had to, to separate that energy pattern so I could look into it more specifically. And what I found was, and uh, those of you who have been listening to these shows, who have uh, read my website, who have read my book, um, the name Lilith is probably familiar to you mm -hmm. uh, in the context of my past. Um, that, of course, is not her real name, um, but that was uh, a major uh, handler of mine. And yes, she's flesh and blood, and she still uh, exists out there today. However, she is part, and this is also part of why I chose that name for the book, um, she is part of what is known as a, uh, or the Lilith Cult. And it is a, um, a global cult that deals in uh, Lilith uh, worship, uh, sacrifice, uh, all kinds of very, very uh, dark, low-level energy practices. Um, anyway, she was able to, uh, I guess, use the energy of the cult and get uh, a faction of the cult to work on specific targeting of me. Because I had been able to successfully block her, uh, which I talked about in prior shows. I had been able to block her, I guess it was about two years ago I figured out how to block her from my energy field so that she could not access me anymore. But it was last fall where I started to notice her energy again. I started to see her specifically in some of the accesses. Um, and I figured, well, she, she found a way back in. And I had to figure out how. Well, she used an amplifier. The amplifier was the energy of the cult itself. 
the member of a group is much stronger than an individual when it comes to these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she was using an uh, amplification process to access me. Um, but again, her main purpose for these attacks is, is not to, to kill, uh, unlike uh, the agency. Her main purpose is to tap and utilize. Um, you know, in her mind, I belong to her. And so she feels that she can do whatever she wants with me and my energy. Um, so, you know, and, you know, she has absolutely uh, no conscience, so there's absolutely no, no thought in her mind of, of how low... How low I go, you know. Um, she takes the very last shred of energy, and when I have, you know, just enough left to live, she disappears for a while. Uh, so it's basically just letting the battery recharge. And like I said, I had blocked her for well over two years, and she had come back. Um, but the attacks that came in in January were not from her. They were specifically from the agency. Uh, I traced it back, and there are uh, a few mentalists that I, uh, that I know very well, trust very well, who also were able to trace it back. None of them know of each other, so they had no communications with one another. They all came up with the same patterns, uh, same time frames, uh, same thread cords. Uh, so that was very interesting. Uh, when we do these cross-checkings with other people, I make sure to utilize people who, uh, who don't know each other, so I can get more uh, uh, more clear, solid reads. So are you saying that these attacks were concerted but were not orchestrated as a, at a group level with the agency? The level uh, of attacks in January were orchestrated by the agency. Okay. Yes. But all the attacks out around there were not. They were all from Lilith and her her uh, group of minions. So they weren't working, the two groups were not working with each other, this was just co-incidental. Wow. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, Lilith takes advantage um, in full, and so does the agency. They both look for weaknesses. They wait until something weakens me, uh, and my guard is down, and that's the best time to grab an opening. And so, you know, they kind of, uh, you know, they're like jackals and hyenas. So I was just you know, framing that, that kind of way, that predatory pack kind of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they don't work together, but they both take advantage, yeah. you know, of each other's uh, hits. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, anyway, uh, I guess it was... About halfway through March, I started to uh, to follow these access lines, uh, at least from Lilith. Uh, the agency is pretty cut and dry. Uh, I know what they want. I know what their purpose is. Their signature is uh, is very blatant. They really don't care uh, because they know that they, nobody's going to touch them. You know, um, but. What was interesting was Lilith, in the signatures that were coming from those attacks, there was something that was too familiar. And after a couple of weeks of work on this, I realized that there was somebody who had gotten very close to me through the school mm -hmm. over a number of years. And they took uh, a great many classes over uh, a number of years. Um, you know, they they had really, really worked their way deep into the school level, and they even moved into the local area uh, from out of state uh, to be closer. And blah blah blah. Um, very gift giving. Uh, just they were just too. Perfect of a neighbor, so to speak. Um, and, you know, this individual has very serious uh, issues, uh, mental issues, emotional issues. Um, and it was very interesting because I found out that 
through this individual's astral attachments, Diana and her group were winning. So, what I had done over two years ago to block Diana, well, there, now you know her name. It's, um, I was calling her Lilith in the book, but her name is Diana. And you don't um, want that removed from this file, do you? No, we'll be okay. there. Okay. I'm not going to give you a last name, so, you know, good luck with the first name. And really, I mean, Diana, Lilith, uh, do the same thing. They come from the same origin. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I was linking that together. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is another reason why I gave her the name Lilith in the book, because I said, well, I, I want to really keep the energy as close as possible, you know, to what she is. Um, so anyway, um, I found out that uh, uh, Diana and her cult were using this student's astral attachments as a uh, an access line into me. Ah, uh, this answers the one question that I had so far. What was the vector? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, because she knew that I would be working with this individual in a way that, you know, would be working on very deep uh, self-healing levels with this individual, uh, trying to help this individual navigate their, you know, their own issues. Um, and so I would be familiar with and comfortable with this individual's issues, and I would not put them in the forefront of concern. And so Diana used this as the perfect access point and shield to block her own energies from being read. And so through this student, who has many altars, and I found out um, well within the past uh, month and a half that uh, you know in these altered states this student was um, willingly uh, working with these astral attachments and Diana's energy uh, so this individual was actually targeting uh, my energy from close range with the amplification uh, and, uh, and purpose the agenda of Diana and the cult um, so it was a very, very interesting dynamic that came up. Um, and because after uh, I had recovered from the stomach virus, um, I was continually attacked. They did not stop. Uh, you know, it kept going, and it was just obnoxious. It was, you know, it was like a nightly thing and a daily thing. So... I ended up removing this individual from my school, from my life, from my energy, from everything. Mm -hmm. And when I finally removed the, the, the last threads, just like that, every attack, every access that had been going on for months had stopped immediately. And they had not, they had not come back they have not picked up since and it has been well it's May now it's been uh, a month of points it's been maybe a month and a half now and so that was it that was that was the that was the key piece that I was missing the entire time and the lesson of the long, drawn out, probably boring story that you all just listened to is it's like the old stories about, uh, you know, the, the Hollywood vampires. You have to invite them into your house for them to be harmful to you. If you don't invite them in, they can't touch you. I blocked Diana from my energy. However, she was able to utilize somebody who was close as a doorway in. And since she was able to utilize that doorway in, she was able then to access 
internal systems within my mind, within my system, my, uh, my physical body, and continue to work in the way that she did for years uh, in the past. And so it's essential that anybody out there who is um, targeted for attacks by any faction on any level that you really, really step back and monitor every single individual that you have allowed to get close to you in any format. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's a family member. It doesn't matter if it's a friend. It doesn't matter if it's a work, uh, you know, a co-worker. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a cashier at the food store that you've gotten friendly with and you talk to every time you're in there. Anybody who you allow to get somewhat close to you can be used willingly, consciously, or subconsciously, or I should say consciously through their altars to access you. And it's going to be very difficult to try to trace the origins and stop these attacks because people who utilize other people's weaknesses as a carrier to access a target hide their frequencies very well. What you feel is familiar energy from the person you know. You do not feel the targeting people behind it. And so it can go on for a long time and a lot of damage can be done without noticing where it's coming from. And so, lesson of the story, you know, be very consciously aware of who you interact with on what levels and try to look for patterns in yourself. When you're around this person on a regular basis, or what not, do you notice an increase in your attacks or your feelings of being drained? Of course, that's energy vampire, you know, vampirism, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. you know, uh, do your astral attacks at night or accessing attacks at night, you know, enhance because you went to visit, uh, you know, Cousin Jim? Um, you know, just be aware of patterns. Look for these patterns because these people who look for any in every facet and avenue they can to access somebody they really want. And even the most aware of us, even those of us who are extremely aware and extremely uh, diligent with our self-healing work uh, and everything else that uh, I do through my school um, or any other healing modality that's out there, you know, we're not above anything at all. We can be accessed just as easy as anybody else if the right key is found to unlock that door. So in a nutshell, that is kind of where I've uh, come from since October, uh, what I have found, uh, what I have uh, gone through, and how I have um, remedied the situation. Um, and I, I told you about one individual. There were actually two individuals involved. Both of them were students. Both of them had weaseled their way into uh, very deep levels of uh, uh, my school. Um, and, uh, and the one of them I, I rooted out fairly quick. Uh, the other one took more time because it was, um, well, it was quite hidden. Um, it was very difficult to see. So that can be the downfall of <laughs> optimism, like you pointed out in the beginning, Randy. Um, you want to see the good side. You want to believe, you know, in people. You want to believe in uh, in balance. And even though that you're not ignorant and you're aware of everything else, and you you might be fully engaged in it. There are certain areas in your life where you really want to believe in, you know, the fullest levels of optimism because sometimes we just need to. 
Well, the naivete is different from, I think, what we would call <coughs> the goodwill that we advance to people. Those who have followed <coughs> me since, uh, I guess, l last winter know that I made some changes. I cut some people. Uh, I cut ties with a network because of, while not quite at the level you've discussed tonight, of this very same pattern of people who insinuate themselves into your energetics through whatever means and then begin to work on you. And, I, you know, I guess all of us get stung sometimes, but I still tend to think in my perception that, that there is a level of trust I'm willing to extend to people and at the same time it's kind of like you know you get what's the old saying once bitten twice shy something like that yeah where do we where do we stop and, and, and then we become cynical and hardened I guess that's the big question well that's why I like to uh, I like to continually point out to people that you know just from my own experience levels that you know no matter how hard I've been hit no matter how hard I have fallen and then you know stepped on no matter how much of a struggle it has been to pull myself back up you know I make it a point not to allow myself to become that rock yeah um, because uh, quite honestly um, you know, and I know a lot of people who know me well, you know, don't like to to recognize that this aspect of me, you know, is definitely there uh, because I have control over it and I, I choose not to be that. But quite honestly, I could easily turn into a rock and just turn everybody off, period, globally, and just be done with it. Um, and say, well, you know, deal with it yourself. But I don't want to walk that path. That's that's not where I want to go. That's not part of my evolution. And so instead, I do the best I can to learn from where I've come from, learn what I have gone through, so that I don't have to go through it again. So I don't distrust new people that come into me now. Instead, I broaden my awareness levels to areas that I may not have been diligent enough before in order to see more clearly what might be behind the scenes. So it doesn't come out of the dark and nip me in the ankle later on. <laughs> so that's just part of the learning process. It really is. Well... I, and I want to thank you for taking the time to come on and discuss this and I don't think it was boring and I do think there are people out there who will profit from this on a number of levels obviously the healing aspect which you reinforce constantly is very important but um, just the idea that uh, we need to be vigilant and yet at the same time remain open for the work that we're supposed to do I think that's important and I guess that's why that that question at the beginning of the show maybe took a, it kind of took a different shape than I expected in your narrative tonight but it was useful I think yeah um well, I'm glad you didn't find it boring, first of all. Uh, as I was talking, I'm going, oh, this is just, this is such, this is just flat, this is boring, there's no character to it. But, uh, yeah, hopefully, but, uh, but hopefully the other side will get something out of it. The other side what? of it is, well, the other side of it is, White Wolf, that there are people out there who are going through this. I mean, I know some of them. Uh, I talk to people on an ongoing basis who are going through very similar things. And mm -hmm. hearing what you share both reinforces mm -hmm. their own direction, their own path. And like I said, the optimism is a big part of this because people get defeated. People feel like there's no reason. And look, we've lost people to this. I mean, um, I've lost people in the last six months who gave up or got lost on the path and couldn't, couldn't finish. And so, yeah. you know, there is no small pain. There is no uh, 
possibly minimizing the level of, of, of what people are going through. I think it's important, and like I said, coming from you and given all that you've done and all that's on record and all that's on your website, uh, this level was, I think, very important. Somebody out there is going to hear it, and I, I believe profit from it. Uh, yeah, um, I, and I agree. Uh, I think the, my feelings of it uh, being rather boring on my end is because I think it's because I've just uh, You've lived my with side it of the story since, I, for our, since October I've just run it to death, you know, and um, and yeah. So hopefully um, a number of people will be able to benefit from it because you're right. You're absolutely right. I know there are a ton of people out there, globally speaking, that uh, are going through uh, very similar things uh, from their own unique perspectives. And when you're in it, it's brutal. And to get out of it, you have got to have some extreme inner strength because that's the only thing you have. It's not the strength of your body anymore because your body can fall. I mean, I, I work out all the time. I mean, you know, I was in top level shape for my entire life and I'm still in, you know, top level shape uh, because I just don't let myself go. And I was reduced to you know nothingness physically I was reduced to absolute nothingness um, for you know months and so physically we, you know we got to take care of the physical body because it's our path through this physical existence it's what we experience life through but you know you got to work your mind you've got to find the strength in your own mind because that is really all you have when your body falters all you have left is the energy of your mind, you know. And when your body is falling, the only thing that's going to help you pull it back is the power and the strength you have in your mind. That's what, uh, that's your lifeline. That's what brings you back, you know, from near dead. That's what holds you, you know, standing when you are getting hit again and, the ha and again and again. It's... It's what you develop inside your own mind. So many people go out there and they, they spend an amazing amount of money and time bodybuilding, you know, but they can't hold focus on anything. You know, the body will falter. It's just dust. You've got to work the mind, and that's what the, the healing sessions that I've been trying to portray here, you know, on, on your show, Randy, is, is all about. It's the development and the strengthening of your mind because that's it. That's what you have. And so the people out there who are really struggling and they, they just say, you know, I can't do this anymore. I quit. I'm done. It's not that your physical body gave out. It's not that your emotions gave out. It's that your mind is weak. It needs work. So don't let yourself get to that level. Take the time, dedicate yourself to working what's inside your head, your brain. And what's the, ener what's the energy of the brain? The mind. Focus on that heavily, but do so in a grounded state. Because when this stuff comes into your reality, those of you who are going through it, you know how tolling it is. Those of you who are not going through it, and but maybe will, hopefully you won't, you'll find out that it's the power and the strength of your mind that will or will not pull you through. And again, we want to point out there is an archive. The archive is, is hosted at offplanetradio.com. Um, just click up under the channels and the White Wolf Healing Path is there. And that points back as well to what goes on on your website, White Wolf, with the courses, the courses that you're teaching up in Vermont and also the, the abundance of material that you have in your store. And, uh, you know... I don't think we've ever been crassly commercial. I think it's fair to say that what's represented there are resources that people can access. And if you've got things on the line, this is a way to get some material in front of you that can really help. So tell us a little bit about what is going on with your courses. Uh, I'm assuming you've resumed full course schedule and you're moving forward with that. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um the let's see wow what's going on um i have started to uh 
to do uh, podcast uh, lessons uh, that are uh, downloadable um, workshops, uh, I guess you could call them, uh, on my uh, on my store because uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of communications from people saying that you know they just can't afford uh, the time to travel. Uh, or they don't want to deal with TSA or whatever, and yeah. I understand that. Yeah. But they still want the material. And so what I'm doing, um, since I started off teaching again uh, in April with very, very low energy, uh, I realized that I had to take care of myself um, because otherwise, you know, uh, I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be of use to anybody if I just, you know, allowed myself to just drag down. And so, physical courses, all the indoor physical courses, uh, the the spiritual courses, um, the mental courses, the philosophical courses uh, for this year, um, at least for half of this year have been suspended as far as physically taking place. What I'm doing is I'm recording them and putting them into DVD sets. Um, the last one I did, I released in April, and it's uh, Eagle Mind 2, uh, Sacred Door of Freedom. Uh, so, for people who got the Eagle Mind set, which was filmed uh, actually exactly a year ago, uh, this past weekend, uh, I just released the sequel. Uh, and so, that's taking up a lot of my time right now, uh, creating these DVD sets to put out there. So, people can literally take these courses right there in their home, in their office. They don't have to expend the, uh, the time and the money to, you know, to travel. Um, and so I believe in the information strong enough to, to do this, to put this facet into the school. Um, and these are studio films, so you don't have all the background noises of uh, classes like on uh, some of my older DVD sets, uh, so they are studio filmed. Um, also the podcasts, these are the workshops, so these are... You know, I plan on getting a whole library of them on my website right now. I have three of them on there, um, where I present um, very specific, uh, acute information that can be found in some of my other courses. Some of them I don't teach in courses at all. They're specifically going to be aligned with, with podcast uh, um, situation. And they range between, um, I think, 30 minutes and two hours uh, max. Um, you know, again, you buy them and you get an instant download. And so, you know, you can watch it on your own computer, your TV, uh, your, your iPad, iPhone, whatever, I guess. Uh, I don't know all the technology today, but... So I figured this was a very practical way to also get information out, more in-depth information than I could possibly do on a radio show uh, to people who are interested. Um, and I have brought uh, events uh, into the school. Um, they are kind of excursions. Uh, there was an event uh, last month uh, that was a, uh, uh, a hike into the wilderness area mm -hmm. where we did uh, a lot of energy tapping uh, of the land, uh, plant, um, animal identification, um, landscape identification and reading and whatnot. Um, I have another one coming up, uh, let's see, May 25th, May 25th, it's a Saturday, it's going to be a cross-country uh, wilderness uh, hike um, here in Vermont, uh, so there is no trails, it will be uh, literally cross-country, and it is going to take place in a designated uh, wilderness area right around the corner from uh, Ways of the Wild Institute, uh, it will be a guided hike. Uh, it will be full day, um, lots of exploration is going to take place, uh, identification, uh, energy tapping, meditations, etc. So it will be a really, really full and uh, exciting day. I'm going to be putting uh, overnight canoe trips in the schedule, um, mountain climbing trips. Uh, so these are kind of uh, a new facet uh, that I'm uh, adding to the school this year. Um, uh, the outdoor physical classes are still remaining. Um, so I have the right of the medicine wheel coming up uh, at the beginning of June. Um, 
Uh, let's see. There, there's a big uh, week-long one in uh, uh, August of this year, which is the Self-Defense and Combat Survival, where I go into uh, extreme levels of detail on uh, practical self-defense, um, actual combat uh, evasion uh, techniques uh, through urban and wilderness areas, uh, survival techniques, uh, tracking techniques, uh, man tracking um, as well, um, how to uh, set up basic uh, APKs, uh, like I talked about in my book. Um, I mean, it's it's going to be a very, 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 very hardcore, um, highly interactive uh, course that will be taking place in August. So that's on the schedule if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot going on, yeah. Sounds good. Uh, again, the website ways of the ways of the wild institute dot com. Did I get that right yep. this time? <laughs> yep, yes, yep. <laughs> excellent, excellent stuff. Well, Wolf, thanks for uh, thanks for taking this time to share. We went a little long on this one today, but uh, hopefully we'll get together again real soon and uh, continue with the healing path. I'm Randy Moggins from Off Planet Radio with White Wolf Von Otzikin, and we'll be back again with another show very soon.